Seth Rollins is back. Rings are collapsing. Uncle Howdy wants someone else's blood. Man, what a fun Monday Night Raw. Just a few days away from bad blood. I'm Steve Falk. This is 10 Count Media. Let's talk about it, folks, because this was a Raw that I was pumped for last monster standing and for weeks and months i've been praying to the wrestling gods that braun Strowman and bronson reed we're gonna break that ring and finally it happened weeks ago i was at a raw in boston and i was convinced i wish i put money down but thank god i didn't but i wanted to put money down that the ring was going to collapse in that match weeks ago in boston it did not happen but here But just a few days away from Bad Blood, we got a last monster standing match. We saw Bronson Reed fall off the apron, landing in chairs. I don't care how big you are, how small you are, how strong you are, how quick you are. Falling on a bunch of chairs on your ass has to hurt, no matter what. I don't care. A chair in your ass has to hurt. Direct quote from me. We had choke slams about two minutes into the match, a choke slam through a table. But to top it all off, we did get the ring collapsing. And mm, that visual, that visual. And it's only happened a few times. And I could see some fans online being like, well, this happened years ago. No shit, dude. But guess what? Maybe someone just watched wrestling, started watching wrestling a, a year ago. Maybe even five years ago. The last time, I believe, off the top of my head, the ring collapsed. It was between Braun Strowman and I think Kane on an episode of Raw. And before that, we had Mark Henry and Big Show. And before that, we had Big Show and Brock Lesnar. The list of matches is just four. Count them. Four matches have had the ring collapse. Now, we have seen rings shake up and down with Undertaker powers. We have seen things like that. But this is the first time that I can remember the ring collapsing in so damn long. And plus, Seth freaking Rollins is back. If you've been watching football lately on Sundays, you've seen him in the crowd. He got tossed out of the stands last week. This week, he's promoting. He's showing up talking about WWE, saying we should watch Bad Blood this coming Saturday. So I kept thinking to myself, Seth Rollins, he is returning this Saturday at Bad Blood. It was a little teaser for the people who were actually paying attention to the football games and paying attention to online and social media. That's what I thought. So I was convinced that the WWE just wanted all of us to tweet about that. Like, oh, I think he's going to show up because he said in this little clip, this little clip online, He said these things, and now they're coming true. But instead, he is setting up the storyline between Bronson Reed and himself, Seth Rollins, because Bronson is the one who took out Seth Rollins weeks ago. I'm concerned, though. I am concerned because Bronson Reed lost this match to Braun Strowman. Two ways this is going to go. Bronson Reed just lost because Seth Rollins was there and assisted, and that's why this is happening. Or we're going to get the Seth Rollins, Bronson Reed storyline where Seth Rollins just destroys Bronson Reed at Crown Jewel or Survivor Series. And that's the end of the Bronson Reed experiment. We needed something for a little while because Seth Rollins was out. Now he's back. Now they're thinking, well, we don't need Bronson Reed anymore. So let's just sell him to Seth Rollins, make Seth look strong again, put Seth back in the world title picture. And that's how we'll wrap all that up. I really hope that doesn't happen. I really hope that Bronson Reed and Seth Rollins can have a decent storyline where Bronson gets a win, Seth Rollins gets a win, and then Seth Rollins can win again and topple Bronson. I just don't want Bronson to get sold out instantly to Seth Rollins. It'd be a big mistake. If you're trying to make stars, that's how you make stars. Have your undercard beat your superstars up top so they can actually, you know, get some of that Seth Rollins sprinkled dust on them. But Braun Strowman picks up the win. I believe, I believe, and I pray to God this is true, that Bo Dallas, Uncle Howdy, had a vignette, a little promo, a little bit of package off his VHS tapes, and he was calling out someone new, someone he's looking to come after. And, you know, they're, I guess, good guys? Like, I guess 
Uncle Howdy and the Y6 are good guys, sort of. But this is what they said in one of the promos. It said, I need you to hear me. Please don't do this. If you go down this path, you will suffer. There is no Basil Hayward painting of you. Your sins will be adorned upon your neck. It will be catastrophic. I'm afraid what we will do to you will haunt me. Please change your path. The screams grow louder and you will have time to repent. It's not too late. Right? Question mark. I'm thinking Uncle Howdy's talking about Braun Strowman. Because Braun Strowman was the black sheep of the Wyatt family. And maybe going down this path of destruction and destroying Bronson Reed is leading Braun a dark path. And Uncle Howdy's trying to warn him, saying, please don't do that. Because if you do that, I will have to stop you. And that means hurting you. And I don't want to hurt you, Braun. Because I think since the beginning of the Wyatt Six showing up, everyone's been thinking, when will we see the crossover between Braun Strowman and the Wyatt Six? Because there's only... Right now, currently on Raw, the connections between Bray Wyatt is Bronson Reed. Excuse me, it's Braun Strowman in the Wyatt Six. Alexa Bliss is the last person who had the a connection to Bray Wyatt. We don't have a lot of people left. Unfortunately, Luke Harper passed away. Eric Rowan is in the Wyatt Six. Braun Strowman is free to intermingle. And uh, Alexa Bliss right now is out You because know, she had a baby uh, forever ago now. So I really am looking forward to seeing if it's Bronson. God damn it. They need to stop. This is my fault. But they need to stop having people have the same goddamn first name. Braun Breaker, Bronson Reed, Braun Strowman. God, man. Anyways. Anyways. They also announced that next week, not on Bad Blood, next week, World Heavyweight Championship match is Gunther versus Sami Zayn. It makes Raw must-see. But it also confuses the shit out of me where if you do have a Crown Jewel pay-per-view, if you do have Survivor Series, if you do have Bad Blood, which officially only has five matches, shit, why not put it on there? But I get it. You got NXT. You got CW. You got USA. You got SmackDown. You got Netflix. You got Raw. You got all these other components all involved with your shows now. It's no longer just, hey, let's put on a good show. It's no, no, no. Let's put on a okay show, a good show. But we need other matches to make other shows better. Just don't feed one show a bunch of matches and the rest of the shows after really have nothing to go to. And that's what I feel like is happening here. Sadly, though, (laughs) we were told Dragunov is out for six to nine months with a torn ACL. This sucks Big old donkey nuts because this is something I was looking forward to. A Dragunov Gunther rematch. Not going to get it. Not going to get it. What we are going to get is the beginning of the new day. Clearly going down different paths here. Xavier Woods beat Rey Mysterio because he accidentally, air quote, took off his mask and then rolled up Bray and started screaming, what was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to do? Xavier Woods comes backstage. Kofi walks up to him. Xavier's looking for a little, like, you know, pat on the back and congratulations. Instead, Kofi's like, "Uh, did you do that on purpose? Did you do that on purpose? Jay Uso offered Kofi Kingston an IC championship match next week, but then Kofi says, no, 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 I don't want it. We're going to give it to the quarterback of the New Day, and now Xavier Woods is going to get that championship match next week. So we have two championship matches coming up. A lot of fun things are happening on Raw, though. But also, Xavier Woods accidentally cost Kofi Kingston his match against Chad Gable. Very interesting. Very interesting. A lot of elements here with the New Day. Makes it very intriguing. Very intriguing. I don't know if Big E somehow will get involved. Duh. He doesn't have to return to wrestle. You return to moderate and say, like, can we go to therapy together? Can the New Day go to therapy and have some pancakes and talk about trombones and things of that nature? You know what? Also, uh, Sonya Deville, Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, I love them all individually, but they need a new name. They desperately need a new name. That's just me, but they need a new name. They need a new name. Uh, unfortunately, though, I felt like Braun Breaker, the, the you know, I guess the werewolf, the dog, dog-faced gremlin, he was neutered here tonight. He came out, shook Jay Uso's hand, didn't spear him, didn't tell him how he's upset about him, and nope, shake his hand and says, oh, yep, okay, cool, I lost. That's not how you do it. Braun Breaker is a man who's a vicious animal who wants to eat your face and wear it as a mask. But yet, he just comes out, yeah, we're cool, man. Shake hands. We'll fight again someday. 
I don't like that. I like Jey Uso, but I don't like that at all. What I did like was Drew McIntyre and CM Punk inside the hell in the cell with Drew McIntyre saying that AJ Lee is going to leave CM Punk after bad blood. <sighs> but also CM Punk saying that he's been staying in a hotel for four weeks because he doesn't want his wife to see the man he's become and the man he's going to even evolve into at hell in the cell destroying Drew McIntyre. Blood will be poured there. Blood will be poured in that match, but... Dominic Mysterio will be put inside of a shark cage when Rhea Ripley takes on Liv Morgan. So many fun things are happening on Raw in Bad Blood. Unfortunately, though, early in the day, we found out that Pete Rose has passed away. This man had rivalries with Kane in the WWE, former baseball player, a coach, surrounded in controversy in baseball, but not in the wrestling world. He was chokeslammed and tombstone by Kane. He got a stink face by Rikishi, who was once in a chicken suit at WrestleMania. He has had WrestleMania moments after WrestleMania moments. It sucks that he's gone, but, you know, just like everything, we all must eventually perish here on Earth. But again, thank you, Pete Rose, for the WrestleMania memories and getting a stink face. And I've been Steve Fall. This is me talking about Monday Night Raw. Seth Rollins is back, and Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman was a fucking awesome match. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.